Hi there, Libras. Welcome to your reading. Um, so the two messages that I got for you when I was meditating, the first thing is uh, I see this scene at an office. I see this woman in the fore foreground. Um, she's wearing like a, a white blouse so, and, and like dark pants. Okay, so it seems to me like you're in a work environment or you're at the office. She's animatedly talking to a male co-worker and she's just like very um, passionate about this story that she's telling the male co-worker. They're both smiling and laughing and in the background there's a door that opens up and there's this man holding a cup of coffee. He wants to be included in the conversation but I feel more so he wants to approach the woman but he doesn't know how to approach her because she's talking to a male co-worker, he, he feels like it might be intrusive of him to um, come in and, you know, try to join the party, right? Or he, he's like hesitant about, you know, telling her how he feels. So I feel like it's interesting because it seems like the King of Cups in the, the traditional deck, it's a man holding a cup, right? But in modern day, that image is transposed in a way where it's just another man holding a coffee cup so i thought that was interesting so anyways he's kind of like lurking in the background trying to find a way to talk um hiding behind the door or peeking out from behind the door trying to you know um get involved in her life but he's very shy he's probably dealing with self-esteem issues not severely i don't see that he just doesn't want to he, he just doesn't want to interfere in case that male co-worker is somebody that she's interested in or just in case the male co-worker likes her so he doesn't want to you know cause any problems so for you guys it would be really interesting if uh, the king of cups or the knight of cups shows up in this deck but we'll see um i feel like for you guys you could be the woman that's getting the attention or you could be the man in the background. Because when I think of Libras, I always think of somebody who's like um, completely inoffensive, okay? It's somebody who's like uh, really sociable, very nice, very polite, very um, just like politically correct, okay? You don't wanna interfere. You don't wanna say anything harsh to anybody. You're just incredibly inoffensive, um, inconspicuous as well. You kind of blend into your background environment and I, I i always feel like so once again it could be you that's in the background lurch, lurking wanting to approach somebody or it could be you the one getting a lot of attention the man in the background he's wearing a pink shirt he has darker hair he's wearing a pink shirt so i always think like um libra people especially libra um Libra moon people, they wear a lot of pink, okay? Male and female, they wear a lot of pink. They wear a lot of purple. And so I feel like it could be, for many of you, if you you are a Libra male, you might be the, the man that's in the background. There's somebody who's very, very passionate, um, who's very, like, center stage, who's uh, very sociable that you might be eyeing and you're not really sure how to approach this person. And then for others of you, if you're that woman in the foreground, you might have, you know, like another person that might be, have Libra and traits, very diplomatic, really sociable as well, but they're unsure about how to approach you, okay? Um, so that's what I'm feeling here. Yeah, there's definitely new passion that you've got coming into the picture. I feel for some of you, you might have emerged from like a separation, a breakup, or a divorce. You're getting yourself back into the dating field and you know the the initially uh, when we've been like single for a long time or if we've been in a relationship for a long time we might not know how to flirt we might not know how to um, we might not even know if a person is that we're interested in likes us or if they're flirting with us so I do see this energy here heavy energy about flirtation but trying to do it the right way and not really knowing when somebody likes us or if somebody's just being friendly. So I do see a lot of that. Um, there is another scene that I, I saw um, after that. Um, this woman in a garden, okay? So like, it's a really, really nice um, warm day. She's uh, mixed, like she's prepared a, a pitcher of lemonade. 
she's uh, plucked flowers from her garden, like daisies and you know, just really nice flowers. I, I see some peonies. Um, and she put in, put all the flowers in a vase, fills up the vase, puts it in the center of the table. It's a round table. She's outdoors in her garden. It's like patio furniture. Um, and she's prepared a pitcher of lemonade. And as she goes to sit down, she's like, oh, I need two cups. So she gets two glasses and they're empty. And so I feel like you're expecting visitors. You're expecting, you're beautifying your environment because you're expecting somebody to come visit or you are anticipating a visit with another person and you're creating kind of like the perfect environment that you feel would be very visually pleasing to the other person. But either way, I also feel like this energy about, you know, having company over, socializing, um, restarting or resetting your social life. So that could be socializing slash dating, um, inviting people into your home, trying to deepen a relationship, trying to get to know somebody a little bit more, trying to keep in mind the first scene was, um, you know, somebody who's like uh, in a more work environment, she's surrounded by other people. So the man in the background, he's not really sure how to approach her. So I feel like in the second scene, it's more like trying to create that environment to single out the object of your affection so that you have more alone time with them, making the time, creating a really visually just a abundant type of an environment so that you can invite somebody in, so that you can put them at ease, so that you can, you know, talk to them and have alone time with them because there are only two cups on that table. So I definitely feel like you're in a position where you are um, either flirting with somebody or inviting them into your home or expecting guests, okay? That's what I'm feeling here, last card. Okay. So let's see what we have here. The card that really struck out, or well, really stood out to me or really struck me was um, when it first came out here. I have the High Priestess and the Hermit. The high priestess is about this sense of inner knowing, okay? This sense of like our intuition is working overtime, telling us about a situation to tell us like somebody is the right one or to warn us about a situation. It can go both ways. And I have the hermit and the hermit is a card about spirituality. It's about your spirit guides working behind the scenes to show you something, okay? To kind of guide you in a specific direction. And with them both looking at each other, looking at each other, I almost feel like you're being shown a situation and you know which way that you're supposed to go. I feel like for many of you, there's a situation here in your life that is creating this, Nine of Swords, okay? The Nine of Swords deals heavily with mental energy that keeps like replaying in our mind, in our head, and we're not really sure how to break out of this feedback loop, okay? So we're feeling like, if I do this, the other thing's gonna happen. And I also feel for many of you, there might be some situation here on top of the Hierophant, and the Hierophant deals with institutions. It deals with, um, expectations and it deals more with like especially family expectation family wants us to do one thing when our heart and our mind wants us to do another and i also feel like this is the month where you kind of have to drown out other people's energies other people's expectations drown out the noise and just really focus on what you need to do for many of you i feel like you might be on the older uh, age spectrum um, you might have gotten out of, you know, like, like I said, I feel like I'm getting an energy of a group of people that have been single for a really long time and you're getting out dating, you're getting out into the dating world and you're almost like trying to find that more practical relationship, the, the more practical relationship partner. Uh, you're looking for companionship. You're looking for somebody that, you know, you might not like want to get married, might not want to, you know, go whole, through the whole spiel again with uh, family planning, um, you know, joining up your finances, joining up your assets. 
you might have recently gotten divorced, you might have been separated, and uh, you're getting into the world trying to date again, and what you're really after is a lot of compatibility. You're not trying to go wild. You're not trying to like uh, find somebody who wants to, you know, hit the club every weekend. You're not trying to find somebody who who who's still trying to find their way in the world. You want somebody who's already where you're at, who's like meeting you where you're at. Somebody who you know have hobbies. They have a lot of things that you both can talk about. They have common interests. You're finding, you're trying to find that relationship that is a lot more compatible. So in the back of your mind, it's almost like I'm looking for companionship. I'm looking for compatibility. But there is another on the flip side of that, which is the Ace of Rods. This is passion, chemistry. This is like a budding new romance that many of you have、uh, found yourself in. Okay. And so, on the one hand, we're looking for a safe choice, and there might be a safe choice that's coming in. Somebody that you know is already on your same page. They've been there, they've done that, and you know, you feel like this could be, you know, like the perfect life partner moving forward. You might need not need to, you know, get into the whole marriage, children,、uh, settling down, joining up your bank account. This could be somebody who's. Sufficient on their own. You're sufficient on your own. You both need a lot of quiet time, and you both need a lot of space. And you feel this is a safe choice, but there's another choice that's really beckoning you, and it denotes to me great passion, great chemistry coming through between you and another person that you might have been trying to downplay, or you might have felt like it was a missed opportunity. It's linked up here with the Five of Cups, which indicates to me that for many of you, you feel like this person might not be a safe enough choice for you. They're very passionate. They're very、um, they're 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 very social, and so you might not feel like they've gotten the partying, the 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 you know,、um, the wild phase or the wild streak. Out of their system just yet. You might feel like they still have a lot of grown up to do. There might be an age difference, and so you're feeling like you have to forego this relationship because they haven't really figured things out yet. But you're really passionate about this person. This person stirs you in a way that no no one else has stirred you in the past, and because of that, I feel like you're feeling slightly off kilter. Or you're feeling like this might not be the safe bet, or this might not be a safe choice. So I feel like you know, once again, there's this trepidation about、um, asking somebody out on a date, or wanting to get involved with another person, or wanting to talk to a person, but feeling like they have a lot of suitors, or feeling like、um, the environment is disallowing a closer connection, is disallowing one-on-one -on -one interaction.、Um, I'm seeing a lot of interference getting in the way, okay. But I'm also feeling for many of you, there's definitely choosing between two options, okay. We have here the two of pentacles, weighing out the pros and cons, weighing out a situation, weighing out to see what your heart really wants. And I feel like for many of you, there's a connection here with a person. That is a little bit on or off. That is not as stable as you'd like. That is, it's it's really really passionate. But I feel like in a way, it it scares you. It's bringing something so new into your life that you're trepidatious as to how to move forward. For some of you, this could be an Earth sign, a Taurus, a Virgo, or a Capricorn. I feel a connection here between possibly a Water sign, Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio, and an Earth sign, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. Somebody's very sentimental. The other one is very practical. Somebody who's really like you know、um, easy to talk to. The other person is somebody who gets things done. So I feel like you're straddling the fence or or torn between and trying to choose between two people.、Um, I did the Gemini reading by the way, and it did mention straddling the fence, being indecisive, and、uh, not going for something. And I feel like this might be an energy that's playing out for air signs because it's also in your reading choosing between two options. And I feel like you might be looking at the more practical aspect of a relationship. Like you're you're realizing that compatibility, innate、um, compatibility, goes a lot further.
and I feel like you're opting for the more safer, the, the past, the the path of least resistance. Okay. And you could potentially forego something that is really exciting, that is really going to break you out of your shell. But I feel like you know you're taking, you're definitely taking the safer route. And I'm sensing as well the safer route might not yield what you're looking for. So I feel like whatever decision that you're making right now, you want to think about it a little bit longer and you want to really be honest with yourself. You know, why am I, why am I denying this passionate side that this person is stirring up within me? Why am I foregoing that? Why does that scare me? Because I feel like the reason why you're, you're looking at this person as if, you know, are they going to stay around? I feel like there's an element here about age difference between you and a significant other or you and somebody that you're interested in. And you're, you might be judging them based on their age rather than based on their life experience. So I feel like it's time to dig a little bit deeper and, and look at things beneath the surface rather than just looking at things at face value you have to do a little bit more sleuthing you have to do a little bit more observing and you have to do a little bit more like um you have to understand as as well where somebody is coming from getting to the root of a, of a situation okay the hierophant deals with tradition it's like long-standing tradition it's somebody it, it's it's a situation that is like um all the parts make up the whole and so you kind of have to look at somebody's upbringing in order to understand why they are the way that they are i feel like somebody that you're looking at might come across as a rebel when deep down they are as conservative or as orthodox as you can get but i feel like there is a veneer here that shows you something that you feel is not safe, but unearthing that, looking at things deep underneath is going to allow you to see this person in a more realistic or in a true light, okay? So things coming to light. There's heavy energy here about coming into a recognition or into an understanding of something that you hadn't before with the High Priestess and the Hermit card. This is like the meeting of the mind. This is uh, indicative to me of two people who are a really good match because they are old souls and it could be old souls reuniting in this lifetime or people that have gone through many 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 incarnations they've had many many past lives and so even though they're reborn in this lifetime as a baby they still have that knowledge from all their past existence to be able to look at life in a very old lens okay so you are dealing with someone who is very, very independent. Both of these cards indicate people who are very self-possessed. They don't need validation from their external environment. They know what they want to do. They move forward. They're not craving relationships. Like they're, they're, they don't need to have another person by their side. So they're okay with being on their own. They're self-sufficient financially and emotionally. They're not needy. They're not clingy. They're both independent and they're very much like go with the flow. If it's meant for me, it will come into the picture for me. If it's not meant for me, no matter how much or how tightly I, I cling onto it, it's going to slip my fingers. So I feel like it's going to slip through my fingers, excuse me. So I feel like you're dealing with somebody who is definitely in alignment with you, but on the surface, and this is really important why we need to dig a little bit deeper this month and not take things at face value. On the surface, they might seem childlike, younger, more attention um, grabbing, more needy in your eyes. But I feel like deep down, they are indeed a very, very old soul. They've dealt with their fair share of disappointments in life. And so they take life, take come what may. And so they have a, you know, devil may care. They even have like a, a very like a transient attitude as to the way they do things. They might approach a situation almost like, I'm seeing this woman holding the flower and it's almost like nothing lasts forever. So let's just seize the day, okay? It's almost like a wilting flower 
nothing lasts forever let's seize the day and i'm not going to stubbornly cling on to a situation if the other person doesn't want to be with me so you're dealing with someone who is a very very old soul they have a lot of self-awareness at face value it might seem like they don't but i feel like deep down there's this magnetic pool constantly um converging like it, it's almost like everything conspiring to bring the two of you together and for whatever reason libras i feel like you've been fighting it okay um i'm also seeing as well a, a family situation could be divorce could be marriage could be family expectations all of those things it's like a whole ball of yarn it's complicated it's it's complex it's all wrapped up together. I'm seeing situations where there might be like estate planning. So somebody might have passed on and there's like a lot of uh, things coming up in wills, okay? The high priestess, usually, you know, she holds a scroll and I always think of that as like assets, uh, estate planning, wills and testaments and, and things that needs to be sorted out. Uh, after a demise of a situation, it could also indicate like legality, um, legal issues, as well as like uh, trying to divvy up assets, okay? Especially property, like housing. Um, so I, I, I feel like all of those things getting involved in the picture. And then I also feel for those of you who have children, grandchildren, children, you're trying to leave um, a lasting legacy. You're trying to figure out and you're trying to decide. If I leave the home to the, the, the child, you know, or the grandkids or to whoever it is, I have this really beautiful home. If I leave it to this child, will he or she take care of it? Or will they just sell it, take the money and, you know, leave and squander the money? So I feel like you're seriously looking at somebody's character to decide what to bequeath them. That's what it seems like because you don't want them to make the wrong choice and because you have sentimental ties to the things that you're giving away and you hope that they would make the best uh, best decision or the best, um, th they would do right by you, but you're not really sure. So you're still at the stage where you're kind of like trepidatious, okay? Um, I'm also feeling as well for many of you um, on the other other end of the spectrum, I feel like there's a lot of um, information coming through, like in a, um, it's like spiritual messages coming into the picture. We have, let's see, four, five major arcana cards that are in the picture, the Hermit, the High Priestess, all indicative of, you know, spirituality. We have the Temperance card telling you to be patient. We have the Wheel of Fortune, which means the Wheel of Fate is turning so that a situation can come together. And I feel for many of you, there might be a new job in the making. If you have been, you know, financially uh, in, in the red, or if you have been like piecing together odd jobs in order to make ends meet, there is a big job coming into the picture. We have the Page of Pentacles. This is the apprentice. This is still something fairly new that you have to learn, that you have to be trained for, that you have to, you know, kind of like build up towards. But it's the beginning of something that you can build upon. Whereas if you're in this situation where you're piecing together odd jobs here and there to make ends meet, this is not a good place for you to be. So they're kind of telling you, you have something brand new that is really going to change your life. And it's something that like um, would be more in alignment with your passion, your skills and your capabilities. But it might not start out with everything that you're hoping for. So I feel like you definitely should try to take this and run with it because it has a lot more growth potential and there's a lot more that can be at the end of the day it's like this is the thing that can grow okay so even though it starts out like uh, in a position where it's you're looking at it you're like i'm making more here with both of these jobs but these jobs might be part-time jobs there's no pension there's no health insurance there's no stability uh you might be let go you know when things get rough within that company or that organization the work itself seems to be flexible so it gives you that freedom of movement but at the same time you have to be at a point where you care a little bit more about your financial future and so take on this it's going to give you a lot more stability 
So I feel like there's a choice that you're weighing out regarding your finances and regarding the work that you're willing to do or work that you're not willing to do, mainly because you're assessing whether or not it pays you well enough, okay? Um, as I was talking about the job, my phone kept flicking, like flickering. The lights kept flickering, so I feel like for, for many of you, really think about this decision. Let me pull out another card for you. Which way should the... Okay, well, one fell on the ground. Give me just a moment. Which way should the Libras... Which direction should they choose? I have here the Four of Pentacles. And the Four of Pentacles, this is like a really stable type of a situation, okay? It's something where we are like clinging on to something that we know. We are afraid to venture out into something that is um, out of the norm, out of the realm of familiarity. So I feel like you're really um, inspired or pushed towards going towards something that is not familiar. So you're being pushed out of your comfort zone. And I feel like it, it might be in your best interest to go that route because, like I said, the Wheel of Fortune, it brings opportunities. It's like the wheel turning in your favor. You're at a point where you're going to be met with a lot less resistance. Things are going to flow well. Um, this can also signify to me kind of like an end to a period of isolation so for those who are single this is great news for new passion new people that are going to be coming into the picture and i'm also sensing if you have recently you know broken up with somebody the wheels are turning once again for new people to be for old people to kind of be um like swept away into the past and new people to to roll in okay so we constantly see this turning of the tides so i feel like especially for people who have been single the hermit okay single not finding the right people and you're at a point where you're just like maybe i should just settle don't settle go for the new and allow the new opportunities to come in even though it is a little bit scary just sort of like you know that man wearing that pink shirt holding a cup of coffee go up to the object of your affection and just you know um, push your way through be more assertive okay so i feel like you're going to be able to get the attention from the people that you want i, I feel like all the fears might be just in your head with this line of swords it's not in reality. I, I definitely feel like there's somebody there. It's like mutual reception. There's definitely somebody that's really interested in you too. So go for it, okay, Libras? The last thing that I wanna end up with here uh, and talk about is um, I have this temperance card. I think this might be the last month that I do um, readings with these cards because the cards themselves, I feel like they're very hard to read. This is the Aquarian deck and I'm an Aquarius so I thought it would resonate more with me but I, I just feel like I've never used this deck because it's just really hard to read. The, the lines are very angular and I like more organic drawings but enough about that. So what I'm getting from this with this card and it's, it's really the way that the temperance card is uh, depicted it's just an angel in this deck okay it's just somebody with a lot of inner wisdom and a lot of knowledge and um i'm almost seeing like almost like a queen bee okay like a beehive it's somebody that nurtures cares for people um possibly you might be dealing with someone who is a very 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 strong matriarch okay and um, this is somebody that has a lot of wisdom. So it falls right above the high priestess. And the high priestess is like um, somebody who, it, it's also a, a very strong matriarch, but her energy is a lot softer. And so the temperance card is like this massive matriarchal beehive type of energy, queen bee type of energy. Um, I feel like there's somebody in your life that might be overpowering because of their energy. Um, they're very financially very um, stable. They're very self-made. They uh, have also been through a lot. And I feel like they're giving you advice in a way that, that um, 
So just bear with me. They're giving you advice in favor of continuity. They're not giving you advice in favor of forging a new path, breaking free, and you know, uh, following your heart. So you kind of need to understand what advice you're getting from people and what their agendas are. Does that make sense, Libra? See both sides of the coin, okay? But especially, you have to understand where the other person's coming from and whether or not they're giving you advice that might be self-serving. So I, I, I'm seeing somebody who is a stickler for tradition. They're trying to uphold they're trying to maintain that beehive. They might be trying to hang on very, very tightly to their power. Okay, so if you're coming to this person for advice, you have to understand that's where they're coming from. That's their world view and that's their vantage point and that's where they're trying to steer you. Not that they're manipulative. I don't feel that with this person. But I do feel that they come from a world where they are very much about upholding tradition. And so whatever it is that you're trying to do that is outside of the box, that is unconventional, you're not going to get the, 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 the reception that you're hoping for from this person. And I, I do feel there's like this power, um, a re really, really powerful woman in your midst, okay? And on the flip side of that, um, I feel like you're dealing with somebody, a partner, who is very, very spiritual. And I also see a situation where something is on his last leg, okay? I'm seeing somebody who, I'm seeing a conversation and somebody is saying like, you had the best years of my life, or I spent the best years of my life on you. And I feel like there's a, an element of a guilt trip coming on. So you want to be a little bit careful. Like, why are people telling me these things? What is their agenda? Um, so I'm seeing somebody who's like, I spent the best years on you. I, I gave you everything. And I feel like their, their giving or their generosity comes with strings attached. It's almost like they did this or they gave you this because they expected you to do what they wanted. And I feel like you have to really look at the underlying motives a little bit more. We can't be the, the, the social butterfly anymore. We kind of need to like stick to one flower and we kind of need to really understand the situation. We really need to really get to know and get to know on a very deep level um, about motives and about you know expectations, okay? Is this person giving me things with strings attached or are they giving me things so that because they want what's best for me. So I definitely see a lot of giving with strings attached and I feel like you're dealing with somebody like that. So I just want you to be a little bit careful, okay? Um, on the relationship front, we do have um, Earth sign, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. I have Virgo coming up with the um, Hermit and then I have Taurus coming up here with the Hierophant. I also have a passionate new beginning that's in the picture for you, Fire sign, Sagittarius, Aries, Leo. And I feel like this is somebody that is, um, it, you think that they're wrong for you in so many ways, but I feel like they might be a breath of fresh air that will really inspire you and that will really help you break out of your shell in whatever capacity, okay? I'm going to leave it at that, okay, Libras, and uh, I wish you the best for this month. I hope the reading is helpful. For those of you who are looking for spiritual guidance, um, I do have a link in the description box below for a psychic out of California. Her name is Bridget. She is phenomenal. I highly recommend her. So if you're in need of, you know, um, advice, spiritual advice, or just um, whatever it is that you need, she's phenomenal. I highly recommend you uh, getting a session with her. So that's in the description box below. I will be back in about two weeks time for your mid-month reading. Take care.